Good morning, everyone. Hope you're having an amazing day. I think it's working now. Please let me know. Let me know right now if it's working. Whew. All right. All right. All right. Yes. 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 Yes, it's working. There we go. There we go. Yes. <laughs> Welcome, everyone. Sorry for the little lag. Apparently, I've been speaking for the past 10 minutes alone, <laughs> thinking that it was working. Anyway, I was answering some of your questions. Welcome to this live. I wanted to uh, kind of like, first of all, we didn't do anything after the 100Ks or whatever. And I thought it was a great time for us to discuss and so you questions, get into it with the community, everything, you know. Woo! Oh yeah, I, I see all your comments now. Damn, I was like, you guys are really not active. Um, so first of all, thank you for being here. Let me know where you guys are watching from. And second of all, we're gonna dig into two things today. I wanna talk about photography as an art, meaning being subjective and doing what you love. And second, I wanna talk about just simply whatever you want. It's gonna be a live Q&A, so you can ask me any kind of question you want um, whatever you want to ask me if you have questions about photography if you have questions about cameras uh, I've got a 135 millimeter 1.8 I've got 70-200 here I've got 1635 ACNL3 everything anything that you want please 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 just ask uh, and um, we will make it happen all right so let's let me get to you guys all right so Merry Christmas oh yeah sure Merry Christmas to all of you. So happy to have you here. Um, so I'm, I'm live streaming on, on Instagram at the same time, just for those of you who are commuting. Uh, ta -ta -ta, there we go. So we've got France, Luxembourg. France, damn, you guys are not sleeping. Merry Christmas, India. There we go. Subscribe to my YouTube. Okay. Uh, Cartagena, Colombia, Los Angeles, Paris. Uh, all right so we've got a, a bunch of you guys that's awesome so you guys can ask any question you want i'm gonna get to them okay when are you coming to hong kong um that's a good question probably 2020 i think but se second part of 2020 uh we've got bangladesh wow that is so cool uk seattle canada peru uh victorville and who do we have on instagram here let us know where you guys are watching from uh, what operating so Instagram just I'm live streaming on YouTube if you want to join there I'm gonna answer the questions on YouTube feel free to join so blam, we've got a bunch of questions Nepal Texas Montreal okay that's awesome so while you guys drop questions I'm gonna I'm gonna I want to give you a little bit or I want to share something with you that's really deep in my heart in my last video I made about editing your photos into epic i sky swapped on two images to show you the power of a software called luminar lately and i've been taken aback by all the comments from people that were saying this is fake photography this is not real this is bullshit we shouldn't have that this is killing photography whatever i would like to remind every single person in this room that first of all photography is an art it's very subjective just like food there's thai food chinese food french food american food just because you like american food doesn't mean that you will like thai food and vice versa or that you're gonna like everything in this world so in photography it's the same there is landscape photography there is people who do composites there is street photography there is photojournalism there are tons of different parts in photography and the most important is whichever you want to do, if you want to practice many, is that you do it because you love it. And not because people tell you that this is the real photography. There's no real photography. There is only one real thing and it is you and the universe you live in and the stories you tell in your mind. So if you ever encounter that, if you like to do composites, add skies anywhere, add birds in your skies, add planes in all those photos that you see in the streets, it doesn't matter if you love it. Now, Let's talk about something that is very controversial here is that a lot of people complain that we don't know it's actually um, built out, it's fake. Well, the good question I think around that is are you deceived because you realize after that it's not purely how it was shot 
or are you deceived because actually a computer helped make it? So ask yourself that question next time you're trying to judge photos that are composites. I personally really enjoy composites. I find them really beautiful. But I will say that if someone is trying to tell me that this is a travel photo, this is showing you a place as it's supposed to be, and then they're completely changing things like changing skies, adding birds, like completely changing everything, then I'm like, well, bro, you're trying to give me something that is uh, supposed to document, but in reality, you changed everything. So it's not really reality. I remember there was a huge debate about a very famous portrait saying that the photographer might have like done things in post-processing to change eye colors, etc. And I remember it was a huge debate because it was supposed to be photojournalistic. But if you're not supposed to be photojournalistic, if you're doing it for fun, if you're doing it for visual arts, do whatever you want. Have fun with it. My photography, 99.7% of the time is as I shot it outside. I just love staying simple. Now, when I see like crazy technology come out and do crazy things, I love playing with it. So that's the 0.5 point percent where I'm going to play with it. I'm going to go crazy. I'm going to be, wow, that's pretty cool. Will I share it? Probably not. And if I do, I will do it with a disclaimer. I will tell you what I did and I'm going to share with you what I did. And that's why I, that video was around that. So I'm going to close that parenthesis. If you ever have a question about Luminar, um, that was a sponsored video I did with them. I'm super honest with you guys. And I wanted to share that because it's so, it's so impressive, but like literally I could have, I should have maybe uh, made the video around different aspects, which I think are absolutely amazing tools into that software. It's like a blend of Photoshop and, and Lightroom, but that is very content aware. So that's what I wanted to, to say, do what you love. Don't worry about what other people think, what they say, as long as you're happy with it, that's what matters. Now I'm going to take a few of your questions, guys. Uh, um, and let me know what you think about what I just said. You know, it's, it's super important. All right. Um, whoa, there are a lot of comments. Let me see. Is there a way to make them pop? Um, blah, 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 blah. What's super chat? Whatever. Um, oh no, there is a super chat. Apparently the comment or the question pops up first. What? Yeah, I sorry. It's, I think it's the first live on this channel. Is DJI Osmo Mobile 3 good for mobile videography? Yes, it is. You're not going to get the quality of a, of a full frame camera or even just like a, a bigger camera with a bigger sensor. Obviously, when I say bigger, I mean the sensor, but it totally works. I have friends, they, they shoot vlogs with it. Absolutely works. Then uh, we've got Florida here. And okay, Oli is asking, when do you try out the Nikon Z7? So the Nikon Z7, I've tried it once or twice at Photokina back a year or two ago. And it is actually a great camera. I really like it. If I were still with Nikon, I would have totally gone for it, if I'm honest. But I'm on Sony right now. Couldn't be happier. So that's it. All right. Then we've got Bangladesh over here, Peru. All right. What operating system do you use to edit? So I'm editing on my Mac right here. It's a MacBook Pro from 2013, 14. So it's an, it's an old version uh, and it still works great. I never wanted to update because all my friends who updated their MacBook Pros hated them. Apparently the new 2016 oh, inch, the new one from this year is pretty good, but I don't want to spend four grand on a laptop right now. Um, maybe one day. Have you ever used the Loop Deck Plus or CT and any input on the lack of accessibility for Lightroom CC? Hey, David, <laughs> look at that. I'm actually just received it. I've always wanted the Loop Deck when it came out, the original one. Then they came out with Loop Deck Plus. And then I was like, traveling is a bit cumbersome and then finally they brought out the ct and i just started i literally installed it yesterday and i run into uh i would say like a bug or i don't know i have to reinstall i think i did something wrong maybe and but i really like the the little platform i, I think it's cool i think it's gonna be helpful but just like any tool especially those it's like you know those little platform music instruments i think i'm gonna have to a, a pretty strong learning curve i will make a video on it in january i think i will share with you uh if i if i find it helpful i will share with you if if i think it's a good tool if it's not if you don't see any video it just means uh, uh 
it just means it doesn't work. We've got Cedric on Instagram who's saying it's difficult to follow me in English. Cedric, I, I'm gonna make a live uh, in French also very soon. So um, guys who are speaking French and have problem with English, don't worry. Okay, so what do we have here? We've got, oh, hey Brazil. Hey Rishi, hey Derek, hey Charles, hey Nolan. All right, what makes you pull out your telephoto on street instead of a prime sometimes like you did in one of your street vlog? Okay, so what makes me shoot with this lens instead of a prime lens, especially in street photography? Well, you know what? This lens is huge, is big, but there is something about it which is 200 millimeter. 200 millimeter gives you an amazing amount of compression. It looks dope. And it gets you to actually get shots that are a little bit different from the rest of the people because everyone shoots, most people shoot with primes in street photography, especially at 35 millimeter. And uh, I really want to shoot something different sometimes. You know, it, it's nice. It's different way of working in the street and you get a different reaction from people. And I think the cool part is also that you have so much compression, a nice bokeh, so you can isolate your subject really well. You can do it at 85 or 135. I started using it, but it's this one is super heavy. I, I will make maybe, or if you have questions, I can talk about it. But uh, I really like that 7200 or shooting with 85 millimeter, to be honest. I think it's just fun. It's It's just having fun sometimes. All right, Sydney. Hey, what's up, Sydney? Oh, uh, someone gave 125 Filipino pesos. That's amazing. Luminar for Windows suffers terribly from performance and stability issues. DX Photo Lab seems awesome. What do you think of it? I like it so far. Hey, Ivan, great question. So uh, apparently that's Super Chat. So um, I got his question first. <laughs> that's I guess that's how it works. Thank you so much, Ivan, for, for, for the question and uh, the donation. So... Apparently I heard that Luminar on Windows is not the best right now or it but Luminar told me also personally that they are releasing an update before New Year or just around New Year's hopefully fixing a lot of stability issues. DXO Photo Lab reached out to me through the French channel and they're like hey do you want to try our software? To be honest I've never ever heard in my close circle of anyone using it and so I haven't gotten my hands on it to try it yet. Um, I have yet to try and then I can let you know. I know they blended, I think the Nick collection, the use they used to have Nick collection and use that. But so far I haven't, I haven't really used it. So it's, um, yeah, I, I can't tell you too much. Let's see if you, if you got my, my answer, but it, by the way, let's ask you guys. Let's ask you guys. Has anyone tried DxO Photo Lab as a software for editing? Let us know what you think. I want to. I want to hear it. So let's go back to the comments. All right. The, oh wow, we've got a bunch of questions here. Um, blah, 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 blah. By the way, I hope all the videos have been helpful, guys. If you have like some cool success stories of of you lately with photography or with clients, just let me know. I'm always happy to hear that something helped. Why are you using a broccoli? Hey, Miri. So the, the <laughs> broccoli thing is actually kind of fun because I wanted to. I don't know. I was. It's it's one of those things that if you ever hang out with me, you you will find out is. I have those weird tendencies of wanting to do things differently and just having fun. Like I'm going to pick up a broccoli and be like, can I shoot with that? Can I do anything with it? And then I'm just going to go and, and try. And at the end of the day, it's fun. It also distracts people from when you want to take a photo, right? Imagine I come to you and I have a zucchini next time in my hand and I, I'm going to take a photo of you. You don't even know what to look at. The photographer with the zucchini doesn't make sense. And because it doesn't make sense, you can play around with that. It's just like what magicians do. They actually distract you so that they can do the trick. I kind of can distract so that I can take the photo. And also I can play with it at the same time. Mr. Pierre, how do you get photography jobs and how much should you charge? Jay, photography job, my one and only lesson uh, from my experience, from how I started in just four months, I had my first paid clients. 
was work as hard as possible on your craft, look at the market in the industry you're trying to get in, look at how they shoot, how good their art is, and get your level to the same. Once you're 90% there. Once you're there, find out everything you can about marketing in your industry and dig into it and find ways to get there. Shoot for free at the beginning, 100%. Get your clients in the door by shooting for free and asking them for recommendations. But you have to deliver great content. Once you have great content and you can dig into the sales part and get there. If you have just the sales part, you might get clients, but you will not get that recurring client that will come back to you all the time because they love what you do. So that's my, my biggest advice. What do you think of watermarks? Uh, I used to use them. Like who else used watermarks back in the days? I used to use them all the time, but I, I stopped. I just accepted the fact that anyone can, can take my photos from online and use them for whatever. Um, yeah, I, I will just, yeah, that's it. I mean, you want to steal it, steal it. I, I can't prevent you. Companies like the big cinematography studios, they spend millions of dollars trying to prevent people from ripping movies online and they still do. So whatever. Hi from Malaysia. I want to ask about how do you have experience that your camera going crazy? Like my Sony A7 II, all the button no responding suddenly during shooting. Yeah, there is a, not me. I don't have that experience. A7 II, I have friends who had that problem and I don't know if they ever solved it. So maybe try to do a full restore with the latest firmware update. That's what I would try. What is your de default autofocus setting? AFC with single point focusing. Always, always. That's my default. I absolutely love it. Never shoot in zone focus because I don't know where the point goes. Unless I'm trying to shoot birds flying by and sometimes the camera picks it up better than me. Um, oh, we've got a live. Uh, what is that? Super chat. Thank you so much, Richie. You're awesome. Hi, so in 2020, I want to become a photographer and don't know where to begin. I'm quite lost in how to start. Any advice? Let's ask who in 2020 wants to become a photographer. Richie, tell me right now in the comments. How can I see that? Uh, Richie, tell me right now in the comments, what kind of photographer do you want to become? That is the most important. I want you to tell me uh, where, where you are aiming, kind of, okay? And Chris, while I'm reading the comments, can you give me more insight into what is the Discord community server idea? Because I'm not too aware of it yet. So Richie, I'm waiting for your uh, just add stuff. But I'm going to give you general line. As I mentioned, if you want to start in 2020, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to take a blank piece of paper you're going to write three things you're happy to shoot day and night and think only about. Why I'm saying that is because once you get into the professional world, that's what you're going to be doing all the time. So photography is going to go from like a leisurely activity to something that is going to be every day. Just like doing those videos, right? Whenever I was doing it just for fun, at the beginning, beginning, I'm like, oh, that's cool. I'm just going to shoot whatever. But the more you progress, the more pressure, the more... Um, the more intense it becomes and the more you do it, the more it becomes like a job in a way. So you want to make sure you really, really love it and that you will be able to A, take breaks from it from time to time and B, that you're going to be in an area that you really love. A lot of people get into weddings because that's where most of the money is. But if you don't like weddings, if you don't like to work with those people, don't get into weddings. Just work, just find a niche that you will love. Next, once you've found your niche, as I mentioned, explore the industry, see who is your leader in that industry, in your area, and then just simply, like literally take his photos, put them on the wall, then you take your photos, put them on the wall, and progress, learn anything you can online, go practice every single day until you find that your work is as good as this guy's work. And if that's commercial work and you can't find those people, just simply go out and shoot for free with brands. That way you get that portfolio. That way you get those cool shots. That's how you're going to make it. And next, most important, I would say, is get good with sales. Like literally take the best sales book you can find. It doesn't have to be photography and learn about market sales and then learn about mar and, 
and learn about marketing. But marketing is brand. You want your brand to be everywhere. You want to be everywhere. You want to be sharing whatever you do all the time. That's my advice for 2020. And get on social media, obviously. Um, but social media is one thing that maybe you don't get caught up on. It's more relationship and making connections. I'm going to take an, a question from Instagram. Uh, someone's saying, I just got a 7200, but I'm having trouble shooting with it. I'm not sure if I can help you, but just take it out more. Get out there more and play with it. Just have fun. Like if you're having trouble with it, I think you didn't use it enough to see how you can use it for the most fun or for the best results. And if you really don't like it, just get rid of it. It's, uh, give it back or like return it and get another lens. Okay, someone on Instagram is asking, A7 II, is it a good camera to start with? Uh, like to do it as a business, like coffee shop, etc. Any advice? A7 II is a good start. There is no bad uh, camera to start with uh, as long as you have the possibility to put good lenses on it and have that like option to keep going in the future. You will, you will be good. A7 II totally works. Don't worry about that. That's, that's great. Um, there we go. All right. I'm going to try to pick up a few more qu uh, questions, but they, they're like, there are so many. I'm trying to, to pick them up guys. So if you have something like super important, don't hesitate to use the, what is that? Super chat. Um, I will, I won't miss it or just spam me over and over, but I don't know. I'm joking. <laughs> don't spam. Um, I think anyway, YouTube temporizes the comment. So how do you get photography jobs? We got that budget mirrorless camera. A7, no, um, yeah, you could get an A7 II, but I think the battery life is not that great. So I would literally save for six months just to get an A7 III. But for real budget, I don't know, man, it's difficult. Look into used A6000s maybe and X6300, look into those cameras. Uh, the Canon M50, I don't really recommend. I don't like it too much. Um, yeah, that's what I would say. Chris is asking, I've heard Luminar is pretty slow when loading RAWs. Is that true? Uh, Chris, I haven't had any issue loading RAWs. It was actually as fast as photo mechanics to render them. I dropped a folder, literally I dropped a folder into Luminar and the folder was like, I could, I could watch, see all the images super quickly. So I haven't experienced that. And that's, for me, that's on the MacBook Pro. So, and 2000, late 2014. So there we go. Uh, are you going to make a video on shooting street photography and film? So I, I got already a video on that. You should definitely watch it like a 10 minute film street photography challenge that was kind of fun definitely check it out uh, steve yuchan hi pierre would you consider to come to hong kong for snapshot street photography yeah i, I definitely want to come to hong kong i went in 2005 i think six it's been a very long time as you can see and um yeah i can't wait to to go back to be honest because i wasn't really doing photography like like I'm doing right now. So I'm super excited. And guys, while we are watching, can you all leave a huge like for that video? Because we're only 34 likes. I think we can do better, right? <laughs> Hi, Pierre, UK 238 AM. Wow, damn. How is the baby? And are you going to do a video on baby photography shoot? <laughs> That's a great question. Uh, I haven't planned on putting the baby on social media, to be honest, but, um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I'm always open to, to photography things. You know, we can have fun for sure. That's why not? Why not? But right now, no, I'm, I'm going to keep uh, certain things a little bit private. What are your thoughts on the Sony a7 or a7 5? a7 5 hasn't come out yet. Anuko. So if you're talking a7 4 or 4, it's a good camera. It's a great camera. And so I answered, wow, Anukul, I think you, you spammed a little bit here. <laughs> 
So what lens should I get for A6400? Thanks, love you. Uh, did you look into, what is that? 1728 or 1635 28 but for crop sensor i think there is a, a lens like that that just came out i think it's a great lens otherwise people love the 16 millimeter 28 uh definitely check it out ryan comments back on the dxo thing and says company always appears to be in trouble that's interesting um yeah i don't i don't know too much to be honest how to edit low light photos or night street photos when the ISO is high? So you asked that question like five times, guys. Just ask it once; it's okay. I will I will get to you. Um, low light, I would say, is the trick is not to push your shadows too high because that's when you're really going to um, make the image look grainy and, and dirty with the ISO being too too high. So you want to balance it out and as much as you can do in camera, do it. So you don't have to over edit, like get your exposure perfect. That way it's easier. And also after that, just, just simply use sporadically that, uh, how do you call that? Uh, noise reduction tool. Okay. And the trick when you use noise reduction is to do a little bit of noise reduction and to increase the, um, sharpness and then mask out certain parts so you only focus on the edges. I can do a full tutorial on that one day. It might be easier than just talking about it. Uh, there we go. What do you recommend? Hi, what do you think about Sony A6000? Yeah, definitely you can start with that. I have a friend, he, he's he got it. You can totally play with it. If you are a beginner, do you... Wait, I don't see you. Thanks for answering my question. We'll definitely check out, check out the camera from Philippine PS. Love the 10 minute challenge here in Makati. Thanks, man. Wanted to do more in the Philippines. Didn't really have, have too much time to, to do it. How about Fuji X-T2 for budget mirrorless? X-T3 Sony lenses are very expensive. Absolutely. Steven, the, the Fuji is great. If, you, if you'd like to do street photography, if you'd like to do lifestyle, you're gonna love it. The JPEGs come out like beautiful. You have very minimum edit to do. I think you you can have a lot of fun with those cameras. To be honest, I don't use them. That's all. So that's why you always see me with that. Um, Sony never paid me anything. Um, so um, it's just the gear I use. I had to buy that beautiful gear myself. No, there is one I didn't have to buy, and it's a 24 millimeter one four. Super happy. The rest, otherwise, I I do I loan gear from time to time whenever, whenever I want to try new things. And that's a good way if you guys want to try. Jocelyn, hey Jocelyn, are you still in uh, Japan? Uh, yeah, how about I want to get into fashion photography, I think. I love doing street portraiture, like stopping strangers on the street and taking their picture. Well, Richie, if you want to get into fashion photography, as I mentioned, like really dive deep into what part of fashion photography do you want to do like it, it's so important to understand what exact area do you want to work who do you want to work with in in what sense i have friends who try have tried to get into real fashion photography like fashion fashion like you see at the, in the magazines it is so hard like and a lot of gigs are like unpaid you're just gonna work your ass off unpaid until you get slightly recognized and what they do is actually they work for a lot of um, pret-a-porter brands or like clothing brands that need photos of their clothes in situation or, or yeah, you know, for the magazines and for online in the meantime to pay for the bills. Yeah, Bob is saying get in touch with models, go to fashion shows, shoot for free, show your work, offer your services again and again. Absolutely hustle, hustle really, really hard very tough one you should come to oregon and do street photography yeah so the last time i was in oregon was for sony kendo that that really cool workshop and we were by oof, i can't remember somewhere in oregon but i want to go back i really love the i think i everyone keeps telling me i have to go to portland so maybe street photography in portland so I have to go, but looking forward to seeing more of your video and live chats. Keep being creative and hope to see you in Montreal. 
à plus et bonne chance. Thank you, Lou. Have an amazing day. Oh, let's take one from Instagram. Yo, Instagram, are you there? Uh, you go to Lens for Portrait. Currently thinking about getting Sigma Art 105, but I don't know. 85, 105, 135 is really tight for for me. Like when when I was playing with that 135, I felt like I was really tight, and it was kind of difficult to to I don't know to operate. I had to be really far from people. I like 85 for portraits. You could even go with 50 millimeter, one one eight, one four, one two, depending on your budget. Uh, NJ Free, I'm gonna share his answer also. Get first gain experience on your own, make a portfolio with your best shots, and then you can look for job by asking companies or looking for open position. Yeah, if you shoot for free for any company, just ask them for recommendations to work with someone else and get it and get it. Okay, that's super important. Always ask for recommendation after you done shoot. Be like, hey, do you know any other clients that have uh, that would like to invest in, the, in in good photography? I'd love to shoot with them. No Africa shots. Damn, no, I haven't been to Africa in a while and I really need to change that. Hey, Rogers, uh, thanks for stopping by and saying hello. All right, guys, hit me up with, with like some, some good creative questions and let me know what you think of what I was sharing at the beginning. Like, do you think compositing is not photography? Or do you think it's just another part of photography? Is it a bad thing or is it a good thing? Tell me. Brother, can you tell us how you got the interest to make photography as your full-time job? Um, Chinan, yes, I was simply bored at my previous job. Was not inspired by anyone in the company. Like I would look at people in the future and I would be like, I'm not interested. Made a list of what I would like to do. Photography, was, being a photographer was one of them and just went for it. Um, and then when I started making money on the side and I felt like, I could actually leave my other job. I I just went for it, bro. It's uh, that's all I can tell you. Work hard, work off of your main hours if you have a normal job, and, and go for it. How did you like your trips to the Philippines? Love the Philippines. Every time I go, it's a blast. Um, people in the Philippines are so friendly. It's awesome. So happy every time I go. You should come to Mexico, and do street photography. Yeah. That's, uh, I went to Mexico this year already. Have you seen the videos? How did I like my trip to Indonesia? Indonesia is so good for photography also. Like if you guys have never been, definitely go there. Chris is asking, you talk a lot about telling a story. You talk about it in the podcast. What's your process on telling a story on the street? That's a great question, Chris. Thanks a lot. I wish I could tip you right now um, with a super chat. <laughs> Chris, I think telling a story is, is everything. Like whenever, and that's something I'm going to literally show what I share in the, in the 30 day. It's all about getting an emotional reaction from your viewer. And the best way to do that is through stories. Now, stories are completely subjective because especially with a still image, it leaves a lot of room for interpretation. So when I'm out there in the street, I just try to be inspired by moments. Do I like the way that person walks? I have two subjects in my frame. Is it interesting for me? Can I imagine two people interacting but not? Do I think there is a story? Uh, is it a real story? Is it something I imagine myself? All that actually will help me decide what to capture and how. And if you can just think about even without shooting, you just look around and think about stories or like try try to tell in your mind what is happening just by looking visually at things and then try to capture it. That's something I kind of like. For example, um, when I was in Japan, there was this girl like starting to run through one of the beautiful crossing in Akihabara. I shared it in the newsletter and I was just inspired by the moment because one of the guy like started like sprinting behind. I didn't see him at first. But I love that girl like rushing through. For me, it was really representing Japan, like kind of empty, clean street, but you're still rushing. And there is that contrast with video games, real life. For me, that, that is a story. Or the guy in India that was a carver, carpenter or carver, he was like doing some beautiful, no, he was a carver on stone, stone carver, doing like some beautiful work. And I wanted to capture 
his craft. And for me, the story behind this guy was his craft. I don't know him because I couldn't speak exactly with him, but from my, what I saw, the few words I exchanged with the people around, that's what I got. And that's how I tried to capture it, meaning getting it into the action. That's how I think about stories. And if you look around me, if we look here with that print, for example, this is story. This is my story with my wife when we're on the world tour and we're literally going around we're running around trying to do the best with our lives. So if you're able to create a story that tells or create an image that tells a story or represents something for you, you win. Remember, it's not going to speak for everyone. But if you can speak to some, you win. You should come to visit Fuji Mountain for photography Japan. Please, next video, please shoot some beautiful landscape in Japan. So Squish Tune, we were supposed to go to Japan um, and and go more in the countryside in October, but with the with the tsunami, oh, with the not tsunami, with the typhoon, uh, we got a little bit distracted. Like train schedule changed and everything, so we couldn't go. I want to go back, uh, rent a car, and go around. You can get more money on portraits. Jorge is talking about like the business behind. Yeah, I mean, it's commercial portraits, working with personal clients. That's that's where most of the money is. But don't dismiss working with big brands, etc. The landscape has changed a lot, but it's still possible. I have lots of friends who do it. I do it too. It is possible. How do I grow on Instagram? I don't even have a hundred followers. Brandon, the real question, and that's what I ask everyone is like, why do you want to grow on Instagram? Like, what is the purpose behind it? Is it just social validation? Meaning like, oh yeah, people like my photos. Are you trying to build a real community and, and discuss with people, have interaction? Or is it just because it looks good and people who have a lot of followers feel better? I'm asking those are real questions. Answer this question and it will help you guide where you want to get. All right, let's see who else we hear. What's up from China, hey Stefano? Thanks for watching. What photo? Wait, I saw something here. Which one did you prefer, 50 millimeter or 56 and why? Um, I like the 50 millimeter. I don't know, 56 was slightly too tight, so we'll see. Charge the same documentary or photojournalism photo shouldn't be manipulated. Outside of that, it's art. Do as you like. Absolutely, bro. Like, totally agree. Who do you like to watch on YouTube? Anthony is asking, um, who do I like to watch on YouTube? That's a good question. <laughs> I don't I don't watch much on YouTube, which is surprising. Uh, I like, wow. I do enjoy watching from time to time Peter McKinnon. I enjoy watching what's his name um james popsy because i think he's he, he has a very sarcastic humor uh seventh era and hayden hayden from time to time who else uh, north border sometimes who else do we have but mainly also i like to watch stuff that is outside especially just like um documentaries a lot of documentaries I liked a few of the documentaries that, uh, what's their name? Um, bah, can't remember, but one of the very big YouTube channel does. And then I have a few friends who do like travel videos that I really enjoy uh, watching. But to be honest, I, I don't watch too many people. On, I don't follow religi religiously anyone. Oh, I forgot Casey. Actually, Casey, I used to follow for a while. And I still watch from time to time. It's just fun. I think he's, he's just good at story, at keeping you engaged which is great can you speak german yes ich kann ein bisschen deutsch sprechen uh i myself do composite because i try to push my creativity in photography by shooting what was realistic and leave it more impact in the story more raw photo just my two cents yeah i see quarter page is asking what did you assign your customers i customizable buttons in your camera c1 c2 t3 uh, so I have customizable buttons one, two, three on this one, and I think I have one in manual at 250 of a second, one in manual 
Uh, no, one, one in. Oh, S Siri just started for some reason. Um, one in aperture priority, and then which is for shooting video. So it's whichever mode I'm gonna use the most, to be honest. I like Sony A A7 III, me too. How many hours does the battery, what? More or less battery last. I can shoot the whole day with those cameras and be okay with the battery. I'm gonna recharge it at the end of the day, basically. And so it's way better. That's why I was like, don't get like maybe A7, A7s because the battery life is just terrible. From the version three, they really, really improved it. Time to go. Have a great day, night. Seb, have a great day to you too. What will your course concentrate more on, street or portrait? So the course concentrate really on the essentials around photography. It's not just portrait. It's not just street. It's the essential. And what I mean by that is that any type of photography that you do really is around the concept like light, composition, seeing things, capturing, telling stories, all that, what, whichever type of photography you do. I dig a lot into that because I, that's what had the greatest impact on my photography. It wasn't being perfect at portrait photography. It was being able to recognize those concepts and focusing on them with the blink of an eye, without having a camera, being able to see things everywhere without that camera. That's what you might realize if you ever see good photographers, they will see things you never see. And if you're able to start noticing and understanding and seeing those, you can use that for absolutely any type of photography. That's what I really wanted to con focus on on the, um, on the course. And that's what I did. I will, yeah, I, there might be another run in um, January or February that I'm gonna do like season five. We'll see, I, I'm gonna make a lot of uh, addition to the course. How do you choose an angle for a shot, especially for wide angle shots? I'm always, I almost always have to go correct the perspective in post. Uh, Kaushik Bora is asking. So for wide angle, you have to embrace the distorted angles, right? So unless you're doing, how do you call that? Like uh, architecture where you want to try to keep things straight. I will say, try to go wild with it. Get close to elements, embrace the distortions, have fun with it. Don't try to make it look like it was like straight because that's not the point in my opinion if you want to try to put everything in the frame it's not going to be possible with a distortion now if you do architecture just keep your or uh, vertical lines as vertical as possible and focus on that but really have fun like i love going wide and close it's just it just like gives you that feeling of being in the shot um should i get 56 millimeter for street photography try it try it if you can if you can return the lens just get it and, and return it that's my advice it might be a bit tight but if you're a little shy that might work in your favor because you don't have to get as close to po people as possible <laughs> someone is like your pov photography videos are just crazy you just jump in the middle of the traffic i love it you should have seen me with clients back in Paris. You you guys would have gone crazy. The clients were like, what is happening? Um, so guys, let me know like in the chat. Like I want to see like, because we've got a lot more people. Can you let me know where you're watching from? I kind of want to, I want to hear about you. And also maybe share with me how, when did you discover the channel? How long have you been watching? Um, all that, I, I kind of want to, I want to have a, a little understanding, guys. Okay? I want to tell me everything. And then. Oh, what's that? Huh. I can send stickers for two bucks, five bucks. Oh my God, that's so funny. But if I send it to myself, that's kind of dumb. I just realized. Sorry, I was playing with the chat. I've never seen that. Um. All right, do you ever adapt vintage lenses? Is it something I'm learning to love on my SM3? Hey, I never tried Vincent. If you have any tips or cool adapters, let me know. I'm definitely up for, for trying. 
So we're watching from Boston. Looking forward to meeting you at the New York City workshop. Chris, you're coming. That's so cool. Yes. Oh, yeah, I just emailed you, right? For the workshop. By the way, guys, if you're around workshop, around workshop, if you're around New York City, join me for the workshop. It's going to be end of January. It's going to be awesome. All the details are on the website. Um, there are a few spots left. Please don't miss it. My grandma is in Toronto watching for a few months. You got me to do my first session of street photography. I'm from Columbus. Awesome, Michael. Glad to hear I got you out there and shooting. That's the most important, right? Like a lot of people just watch videos about photography, but don't spend time shooting. Like shoot, 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 have fun. Like stop watching me, doesn't matter. What's your photos you like the most and what's the story behind? There are a few, man, like this one right there that I printed out. Whoa, I absolutely, this one guys, I absolutely love, love, love that image because it's nature. It's so pure. It's so beautiful. I just want to dive into those blues. It's a top down shot of a coral reef in French Polynesia. It means a lot to me also because uh, French Polynesia is, has been on the, my bucket list forever since I'm a kid. I got to go there, got to capture that, and it just makes me so happy, to be honest. Now, a few other shots, the one that I have behind, if on a more personal level, because that that one, as I showed you earlier, is representing kind of my year of adventure with my wife going around the world. And well, we can't see. Wait, sorry. You're, you're probably thinking, why are you doing that like that? There we go. This one, I absolutely love it. It for me that's the adventure spirit that I've always tried to cultivate and that I try to keep with my wife. And then there are a bunch of other shots like Milky Way shots with me in it. I, I really love those. Uh, who else do we have here? When is the best time to sign up? I've been thinking, wanting to ask. Oh, for the course, the best time to sign up is for season five. I would recommend you. You can join now actually and just like absolutely do it whenever you want meaning at your own pace i would say if for the next batch of the course i would recommend you to join while everyone joins it's just it creates a group effect but if you prefer to learn on your own at your own pace you can join today i'm going to add a, a lot more content after january also um it's already in my opinion it's already great we've got so many good feedbacks and so many people that it helped so much but I'm a perfectionist. I love to add things. Uh, da, da, da. So we've got Salina, Central Illinois, Cleveland, Ohio. We've got watching since February last year, watching Casper, Wyoming, love your videos, six months, Germany, Oregon, North Carolina, Boston. Wait, I think I missed a bunch of you guys. I have an A6 man. What lens can I use for street photography? I think I answered that one earlier. Adapters are cheap. 15 vintage lens are cheap. You can find them on eBay. Tons of fun. I'm going to try, you know, like David Burnett, a very famous like photojournalist, uh, actually had that le had a few vintage lenses on his ca A7R4. And I thought that was hilarious. And his, if you watch the two minute challenge, you know what I'm talking about. And da, 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 then we have Malaysia watching for a few months. How many hours do you work a day? That's a good question. I don't know. I don't track. If you ask my wife, it's, it's probably always. If you ask me, it's probably not enough. <laughs> that's that's the reality around it. Next, we have new to photography on your channel. 7D Canon. It's what I found in the house from the UAE. Also, man, welcome to the channel then. Zoria, I started almost from the beginning of your channel. Oh, no way. That is so cool. Love watching your video and seeing your photos on Instagram. Sending love from LA. Thanks, man. Zori. Or Zori. Wait, Zori pictures. Yeah. Is Sigma 30 millimeter F1 for good for taking street photography? Love your videos. Come here to make videos in Vietnam. 30 millimeter one four. I never tried it. I had the 35 one four from Sigma. 
love that lens but if i compare it to a 35 one four for one eight from sony right now if you're talking sony i would go for the sony one because even though it's lighter it's not one four it's one eight the fact that it's lighter smaller will make you use it a lot more so i would i would definitely go for that that 3514, although I use it for a lot of client work, weddings, portraits, it's magical. That's it, man. I'm from Indonesia. Love to photography, strolling around in the YouTube world and finally found you. I have this question, always wondering how street photographers make money. So, Mang Udin, I answered that question earlier. But street photography and money is, is really around your art. Are you able to create books that people are interested in do you have an audience around that can you become an artist where you're literally gonna do fine art with your photography exposed in galleries that i wouldn't try focus my effort on street photography if i wanted to make money i would keep street photography as a great practice for the rest of my work and i would try to maybe work on storytelling for businesses and work around that or integrate street photography and client work for for businesses you know but it's tough man if you want to do just street photography unless you build an audience or you want to um educate people like take a education approach to it but a lot of i don't know a lot of street photographers that actually make a living out of it all it in, me including all me and my friends etc we make like a lot of work comes from um, commercial and then we do suit photography for fun fell in love with the photography at 52 years old no i sell on getty images that's awesome man you should tell us more about selling on getty images i think i don't know if you can sell much of the street photography but if you're able to get out there in the streets and capture a lot of like what could be um stock images definitely do it Stock images is something I've always wanted to <laughs> to get into and it's one of those things I never got around because it takes so much time. Oh, Martin saying the Tamron 1530 is brilliant apart from the lens flare. That's good to know. Thanks, Martin. Martin, I'm coming back to London in February. Are you coming? Hey, I'm from Brooklyn, New York. And a dental office asked me to shoot a staff of about 10 inside their office. Headshots and group. What's a fair price to charge them? Nikon 17, oh, 7100, Tokina 1116. Huh. Um, if you don't know how, to, how much to charge, what I recommend you is to work backwards. Try to think about how much time you're going to spend shooting, how much time you're going to prepare to shoot, and how much time you're going to edit. Based on that, calculate the number of hours you're going to work and give yourself a rate you're happy with. If you want to charge $50 an hour, $100 an hour, $150 an hour, $5,000. No, I'm joking. <laughs> and, and use that as a basis. And then you can break it down. You can divide it by the number of photos you're going to deliver or number of people you're going to shoot if you want. But the best way is to make sure you're compensated fairly for your time. Now, if it's your first work, uh, maybe don't overcharge. If you're not sure, you can deliver the right work but if you are really good and, and like confident go for it like charge full price um blah, 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 boom. have a 50 minimum 1 8 a 7 or next then 85 or 35 if you have 50 i would say 35 you're gonna enjoy that oh actually 85 maybe now actually you can turn your 50 into crop mode so just go for 35 um, bah, 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 bah. we've got Brooklyn we've got Vietnam where do we have here how about the meetup in Boston I have never been to Boston to be honest what is your workflow in Lightroom how long on average do you spend editing I edit photos in five minutes if I'm honest not more so I drop one of the presets I created like guys if you edit a lot of photos just create your own presets and just if you do the same thing all the time th you shouldn't uh if you have certain themes of images you like to edit the same way just remember that theme create the preset after you edit it and then try to use it in another image like it's a try and now that's how i build my preset it took a while to be honest like to get a like, good presets that i can use on several images 
but once you nailed a few ones a few styles you like then it makes it way easier to edit and then i do local adjustments for the next four minutes sending you love from portugal have you ever tried sigma lenses or canon mount in sony camera body adapter yeah i tried uh, it works it works and uh sigma lenses i like them they're good they're good lenses especially the uh, sigma art i'm looking to upgrade from a 80d something better for low light what do you suggest around the two thousand dollar range get a sm3 100 percent and get a and a good lens um you can get whatever if you shoot wide or, or tight um a7 three man you're gonna be like blown away for business of photography what would you get 24 millimeter or 35 i would get 24 millimeter because it's wider i would be able to shoot interiors or like wider places i can always crop in but 35 i wouldn't be able to crop in There we go. Next, what do we have? Oh, so yeah, Chris, the workflow in Lightroom, I'm going to share it in New York. Like we're going to sit down. I'd, I'd show you guys how I edit exactly. Any plans to visit Toronto? Yes, I'm coming beginning of January. Any recommendation? Can you do a workshop in LA? I'd love to go. Uh, yes, I asked people last year if they wanted something in LA. Didn't get anyone. So I was like, man, maybe not interesting. And a good recommendation on buying a full frame camera for a beginner. Should we go new or used? What's a good camera recommendation? Always go used when you can and get used lenses. Or if you're afraid of the camera, get a new camera and buy used lenses. But as much as you can, get second hand market, bro. Like I preach it. I don't always apply it if I'm honest, but go for it. The problem with Sony is that there is not a, a big second hand market right now. Um, guys, can you all leave a like on that video, please? Come on, let's do this. <laughs> I'm joking. We're at 60 likes. I'm like, that's it? Um, it doesn't matter much. I just want YouTube to recommend it to other people. I think there's a lot of good, good value here, like good questions from you guys that might interest people who couldn't join. Which city or country will you visit next for photography? Next is going to be Toronto and then I'm going to be in France and then India and then I'm not sure India or Nepal. We haven't decided yet. I'll be in Germany also in May. I'm going to be sh speaking live at Fotokina. So if you're in Germany, if you're coming to Fotokina, let's meet. Hello, Pierre. I'm a student, so I don't have lots of money to use on photography. So I'm buying secondhand. Is there anything you know about the old Canon 24105 f4. Yeah, it's it's always been a good lens to be honest. Like uh, every single one of my friends who had it liked it. Very solid, good quality. Um, I don't think you're gonna be deceived. Now, if you're looking for something that opens really wide, remember get something like 518 so you can shoot in low light without compromise on your ISO. Sony used market is growing. Yeah, definitely growing, especially since they keep dropping new cameras. <laughs> uh, Chicago workshop. Anthony, yes, there is a Chicago workshop for those of you who are asking. It's in April. You just go to pietinamba.com forward slash workshops and you will find all the details. Can you show a close up of your camera? I love seeing a well used camera. Um, is it? Yeah, there you go. Dun, dun, dun. There you go with my screen protector broken. I think it, you should be able to see it. Hey, Instagram, you want to see it? There you go. Beat it up. It's crazy because like, I don't know why the paint on the Sony bodies like comes off so easily. In a way, I'm kind of bummed, but it's okay. <laughs> I'm like, what? Why is it coming off so easy? What lens is that? Uh, I'm on 16-35-2-8 here. Will you be running a workshop in London in February? Sean, yes, there is a workshop in London in February. You can check it out. It's same go to phnumber.com workshop. You will find all the details. I'm surprised you guys asked so much. Like, um, I didn't share it on YouTube. That's why. Hmm. I only shared, shared it with the newsletter. Martin, who was the first 
participant at the London workshop, I think it was last year or two years ago now, last year. Martin has an EOS R, it's very enjoyable to use. I've seen him use it, definitely. Martin, you had a lot of fun with it. Um, that's People were asking on Instagram about like EOS R or not. So there we go, awesome, love the used look. I covered my camera in gaff tape. <laughs> Yeah, that's a, you can cover it in gaff tape. The, the problem is when I was going to hot countries, the glue would literally like melt on the camera. And I was like, no, and you've seen me with, hey, got my Zebra, Zebra 7200 still, but the, the tape like keeps like slipping and coming off. Martin, you see my memory is like lost since I got a baby. Like my brain is like slowly dying from the lack of sleep. <laughs> I forget. But I can't wait to to come back and, and do another one. So you, you can check out the date on the website. I can't remember what I put, but check it out, Martin. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing you, even if it's just for a beer. I don't really drink much, but tea for sure. <laughs> I covered my gam camera. Is street photography your full-time job? No, street photography is not my full-time job. YouTube somehow became a full-time thing. So I'm super happy and blessed for every single one of you that are watching because you guys helped me make it possible. But photography, shooting for clients has been what I've been doing. I shoot still video for clients also, like I shot for LinkedIn, for example, like uh, corporate clients and stuff. But YouTube is literally becoming my main thing and I'm so happy with it because that way I'm able like, to express completely whatever I want, my art, do videos that for you guys only and not care about anything else. And thank God I have uh, a few sponsors sometimes that are happy to actually share stuff with you or that want to share stuff with you uh, that I do like already. For example, what did we have? Like, let's talk about money, right? Let's talk about money. I had, I had, wait, I'm gonna restart the live on Instagram. So I had a sponsor, we had once Audible, which is something I use every single day. Then we had, what was the other one? Uh, Skillshare that I've used a bunch of times to learn stuff. We had, I wanted another sponsor, but I've never gone through. We have Luminar that I've used uh, um, and that I like as a software. And that's pretty much it. I think I can count them on my fingers. Like there's very few of them, so. That's it, guys. <laughs> you know it. Which, uh, come to Oregon. Do you have your own printer for photos or just order them? I don't know if you should buy one as a beginner. Ooh, Michael, like watch, uh, what's his name? Watch Nigel Danson or other people about, about printing because it's not necessarily the best to get your own printer at the beginning. So really, really has to make sense for you. It's not cheap, actually. It, it's sometimes it's cheaper to have it printed and you get better results. Desde Colombia, grandioso trabajo el que haces, haces. Muchas gracias, no ver. Love Colombia, I wanna go back. Should I go to school for photography? Emily, no, 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 save your money. Buy a camera, get out there and shoot learn on your own, find clients to shoot for free, practice, practice, practice. That's what you need to do. Hello, Pierre, is the new Sony 3518 good for street photography? I love that, that lens. I haven't tried it on street. I was supposed to receive it, but I received a crop sensor lens instead. So I have to, I sent it back for, it's a loan. So I sent it back and I'm hopefully we'll get the 3518 for full frame. All right, guys, we're reaching the end. If there is anything you want to say, if you want to give us some love, if you want to say hi, please let me know. What is that? Did I just insert an ad? Guys, do you see an ad now? <laughs> I, I don't know. I pressed the button and it said ad inserted. Create highlight video. Share. Okay, s sorry, I'm discovering some new buttons here. Hey Pierre, it was nice to see you live. It's really late in Germany. Wish you all the best. Future. Yeah, man, go take some nap and uh, come to uh, Köln in uh, May for Fotokina. 
That way we can meet up. Some of your recent video found out that you upgraded your phone to a Pixel 4 XL, right? Yep, I'm on a Pixel 4 XL. It's a great phone. Uh, if I'm honest, what's their name? Google sent it to me they, because I'm with their Pixel team program. They've been sending me their phone since Pixel 2. Super lucky. I don't know how I got there, but that's cool. Um, Pixel 3, I liked it. I liked almost better the Pixel 3 front camera because it could go wide, like very wide. The Pixel 4, I gotta say, like the back camera is amazing. I love it. But I feel like they could have done a little bit better. So I'm from India. I don't get clarity in my pics what to do. Check your lens. Might be your lens. Try it with a friend's lens, a good lens, more expensive, and see what happens. Should I get an Nikon 50mm lens or my K35 manual lens for my APS-C camera? Ooh, bro, it's it's up to you, man. It's really for up to you. Like, manual is going to be a different game, huh? Hi from San Francisco. Hey, Dory. Thanks for answering my questions. Looking forward to meeting you and picking your brain. Have a good night. You too, Chris. Have a good night. All right, guys. Oh, wait. There was one question I missed here. Like two. Sorry. What is the orange backpack you use with a roll top? Is it waterproof? It's a F-stop bag. I might have it on my gear list. Check it out. Like it's kit.co forward slash PIT number check. Otherwise, just uh, I think it's called Diota or something like that. Which way is the easiest to distribute photos to clients? Sometimes I send Google Drive link. I've been since I was 13. I'm 18 now. I want to be more professional. Zori, look into something called Shootproof. I used them back in the days. For I still use them actually for my clients. And it sends a really nice looking gallery where people can either purchase straight prints or like download on these certains. You can put access. You can have put landing page. It looks dope. Highly recommend you to do that. If you come to Furukina, I would be happy if you could meet. Yeah, yeah, we'll do a meetup at Furukina if any of you are from Europe right now. All right, guys. Hope that has been helpful. Guys, I'm going to let you go. I hope that has been helpful. I hope to see you around. See you in the next video it's gonna be tips for night photography night street photography or just like photography in the at night in the cities i think you're gonna love it please 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 share the love and yeah any suggestion let me know i can't wait to hear more from you and see you guys in real life also for those of you who i have the pleasure to meet you guys stay awesome get out there go shoot try something different try something new i'll see you in the next episode